I don't know where y'all sitting today, but there are some of us who have a testimony that I went through it and it didn't feel good and I wouldn't have chosen it for myself. But after I'm on the other side of it, I'm stronger. I hear Marvin Sapp say, I'm wiser, I'm better, I'm so much better. And I got to see God in a different way that I never saw him before. If I hadn't gone through that fight, I wouldn't be as strong as I am right now. In my estimation, in my definition, Kylan, I got a midnight scripture. You got one? You tell your grand, oh, Kylan got one. Come on, y'all. Kylan been teaching at the senior citizen home with us. Kylan, come do Bible study. We're going to miss him now that school started. But a midnight scripture, in my estimation, is a scripture that when it's the darkest time in your life, and you are all alone physically. Nobody is there. You don't have a prayer partner. You don't have another brother, sister, friend, or foe there with you. You are just in darkness in the middle of the night. And a midnight scripture for me is a scripture that points me to let me know that joy is coming in the morning. And so if you don't have a midnight scripture, when you, you need to have a scripture that you can say to yourself when you don't know how to pray and you don't know what to pray and you don't feel like praying and things are dark around you. You need to have a midnight scripture, something you can say to yourself. As the book said about David, he encouraged himself. We, we don't know how he encouraged himself, but I'm telling you one way to encourage yourself is to speak the word of God over yourself and your situation. And so many people use the, um, uh, I, I Googled this morning, uh, top 10 scriptures for 2023 in, uh, in uh, America. And, and Romans 8 and 28 was one of them. Joshua 1 and 9 was one of them. It's it it just, you know, y'all Googling everything else. Google that. <laughs> Google that. <laughs> and then read them. Don't just Google them and say, yeah, Pastor, I saw them. No, read them. <laughs> So a midnight scripture will get you through uh, those dark times when you, when you feel like giving up. You need a midnight scripture to minister to your soul. When, you, when, when it feels like the walls are crashing and caving in on you, you need, a, you need a midnight scripture to make you hold on and renew some strength in you. When you're in a storm and you can't see nothing because stuff is blowing past your face so quick and rain is hitting your face, you need a midnight scripture that reminds you trouble don't last always. And so, and so here in Romans 8, 28, the writer tells us that we know some things. But he ain't really talking to everybody. He's talking to a specific set of people. Because if you're quoting this scripture and you're not a part of the we, you're not qualified for the scripture. He says, and we know that all things work together for good to who? Them that love God. And who else? To them who are called. They're called according to his purpose. So it's some qualifiers here. Because some of us, well, let me, not, let me not speak for you. There are some people whose stuff ain't working for the good. Stuff just working. It's working against them. It's working over them. It's working under them. I liken it again unto the parable of the umbrella. It ain't in your Bible, so trust me. The parable of the umbrella is that everybody goes through a storm. But the one who has the umbrella can protect himself. He has covering. She has a covering. Even in the storm, you don't get so wet. Even in the storm, ladies, your hair don't get messed up. Even in the storm, bow heads, the rain don't tickle you like everybody else. And so my personal salvation with my Lord and Savior does not exempt me from storms. What it does is it causes him to cover me in my storm. And we know. But I want to make sure I back it up. I'm going to go real quick. I'm, 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 I'm going to go real quick. Erica, you wave at me when my time up. I'm going to go real quick. The, the verse starts with the conjunction and. 
So most of us, we just read the and we know. But if it's connecting something else, then you got to go back and see what it's connecting to. So if you go back to verse, let's just go to 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for who? That's the we, y'all. That's the call, y'all. That's who's getting the good of it. He make an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's the good. So you got to put it in context. You got to study it. You got to know it. We don't know that all things working together because we know everything. We quite honestly don't know everything. A lot of things about the will of God, we don't know if he didn't put it in his word and he didn't reveal it to you. But when we are spending time in prayer, the Holy Spirit prays what we don't know to pray. And he's praying for the good, which ain't always my good. See, we got this thing. I know we're living in a me generation, and, and, uh, and I'm first, and I better, you better get yours before they get you. You know, we got all of these crazy philosophies and slogans, uh, but, but the prayer we pray should be for God's will. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. If every time you, you pray, you just giving God your wish list, I want to announce to you today that God is not Santa Claus. He ain't trying to make your Christmas list. But the saints are praying the will of God. And sometimes the will of God is uncomfortable. Sometimes the will of God causes me to sacrifice. Sometimes the will of God, most times the will of God, all the time, the will of God causes me to humble myself and walk in humility. And so if you back up, if you back up, you see another scripture. In this same chapter, you see another scripture that talks about, uh, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So it, it, it lets us know before we get here to know that everything is going to work for the good of them that love God, it's going to let us know very clearly there's going to be some suffering. And not only that, there's going to be, uh, not only are we going to suffer, but if you read back a few more verses, there's a whole lot of groaning going on. Y'all, I knew uh, that the Spirit was groaning and making intercession. But if you back up, it says those of us who are the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan. And if you back up a little more, it says the whole creation groans. It's so much suffering that has come forth from sin, from the original sin. There's so much suffering that the earth is groaning, the children of God are groaning, and the Holy Spirit is groaning and making intercession. And with all the suffering and with all the groanings, we still know that he's working. Let me, let me back up. Let me back up. Video, y'all give me a countdown. Let me back up because I want to make sure that you know uh, very clearly what I'm trying to say about the, the personal salvation, having your own umbrella. I want to make sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, Everybody is, is going to experience, everybody is going to experience the trials, the tribulations, the, 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 the loss of loved ones, the heartbreak. We're all going to experience it. But when the Spirit of God starts to intercede for us, God gives us what we need to get through what we're going through. He doesn't leave us alone. And if you don't speak the wrong thing over your situation, 
If you don't allow somebody else to bring you a pity party and negative uh, thoughts, you will be able to stay connected to God well enough to see his hand on your situation. I don't know where the crowd is. I don't know what section y'all in today, but there's some people in here that I'm in that same group that we know some stuff that we went through was terrible at the time, but later on we were able to see that God was doing something new in us. I don't know where y'all sitting today, but there are some of us who have a testimony that I went through it and it didn't feel good and I wouldn't have chosen it for myself, but after After I'm on the other side of it, I'm stronger. I hear Marvin Sapp say, I'm wiser. I'm better. I'm so much better. And I got to see God in a different way that I never saw him before. If I hadn't gone through that fight, I wouldn't be as strong as I am right now.